since 2004, one of the best-selling Hondas in North America. Brandon Hyundai has given us the all-new redesigned 2022 Hyundai Tucson SEL in your phantom black. The front-wheel drive gets a fully refresh from the exterior to even in the interior with larger infotainment, the latest technology, digital gauge cluster on the exterior, refresh front and rear bumpers, a modern twist any which way you look at this vehicle going against your Honda CRV, your Toyota RAV4, or your refresh Volkswagen Tiguan. Which one's going to be the best value, the most luxury and technology in the sporty style that you're looking for in a small SUV? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rods, and I'm gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. Hyundai Tucson on its fourth gen with nearly seven inches of ground clearance receives that refresh bumper with the rework grille. The side is going to be more sculpted and more modern with the H styling going into the rear with your rework bumpers. New LED tail lamps are going to be set in the back with the light bar, the grille pattern on the lower bumper. And what I like about this particular vehicle is you have two different choices. You could either get the Tucson or you could get the Santa Cruz because it's basically the same exact vehicle except one's a truck and one's a compact SUV. You're gonna have your new LED headlamps, the hidden daytime running, the grill will get that gloss black that's going to just make it a little bit more massive and give a stance that's at 73.4 inches, which is the same as the RAV4. I do like how bold this pushes in to your fog lamp assembly and your side air curtains. Underneath it, you're gonna get the silver and then the black that's going to go around more or less a spoiler lip in the front fascia. It's not gonna be the tallest, but the stance that you're getting with this, it really does mimic a Genesis a little bit. And the luxury slash adventure styling you're receiving with the Tucson is not going to be in the Honda CRV or your Volkswagen Tiguan. So you gotta kinda take those things in consideration when you're looking for an adventure slash sporty athletic. 19 inch upgraded wheels is what we have. These are alloys. You have the two tone look, the disc reading behind it, 12 inches. The rear is at 11.9 inches. A McPherson strut front suspension is what we're set with, a multi-link rear suspension. Both the front and the rear will have your coil springs and your anti-roll bars. You're going to receive that chrome or satin look that's over the windows. I do like how they implement this design pattern in the rear so it gives a beginning and a finish look to it, especially the way the lines contour into the front door panels and they do the same thing exiting into these LED tail lamps. It's not going to be the longest vehicle. That would be the Volkswagen Tiguan. This is at 182.3 inches, a wheelbase at 108.5 inches. So it's a good segment in the sense that it's not overly long, not overly wide, you can get in and out of anything, which you'll see in the drive. Towing will be the lease at around 1,000 to 2,000 pounds, which you know, it's a smaller compact SUV. You really don't expect to be towing that much with it. You do have a bit of a spoiler lip, and underneath it is gonna be a hidden rear windshield wiper. So luxury, even from the front to the rear, is what we're getting with the new Hyundai badging. And I do like how they put it there because you got the light bar that goes underneath it and they have kind of a diffuser look here, no exhaust outlets, but I do like the fact that we have that grill pattern that pretty much goes all over the whole lower bumper. Going inside to your power tailgate, you're gonna start off with the largest cargo in its class at 38.7 cubic feet. We do have a 12 volt or 180 volt charger. There is a spare tire tucked underneath the floor. The rear bench split folds at a 60-40 split that's gonna max the cargo to 74.8 cubic feet. The adventure slash luxury of the Hyundai Tucson is going to stand out from the crowd. The refresh that they did for this fourth generation I think it just gives more of a bit of an athletic style. In price point, you really can't compete in the sense of 
what you're getting bang for your buck and they back the performance with a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine producing 187 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque that's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission achieving 26 to 33 mpgs which is the best amongst all of the competition which i've been talking about that's going to achieve a zero to 60 at 8.8 .8 seconds which is faster than the volkswagen tiguan a quarter mile at 16.7 seconds which is yet again faster than the refresh Volkswagen Tiguan. Top speed around 120 miles per hour, stopping 70 to zero at 178 feet. This beats the Toyota RAV4 in the safety for stopping. For speed, you're beating the Volkswagen. For the styling cues for the refresh, it's something that it really sets a different image and the fact that this is offered as two different vehicles, either an SUV or a truck, let me know in the comments what you think about the all-new 2022 Hyundai Tucson SEL as we go into the interior, go over the tech, and take this for our test run. Entering inside the all-new Hyundai Tucson, you're going to receive 40.1 inches of headroom, 41.4 inches of legroom. It's a gray on gray leather bucket front seats because we have the premium package, which also adds ventilated to the front seats. We have heated seats, power adjustment for the driver. We have a total of 10 ways. Manual for the passenger, it's perforated, you got the soft leather on the sides, and you have the harder materials, but it gives a design that's on the seat. So I do like what we're going because it has an athletic yet modern twist, even in the interior. And it actually starts in the rear door panel, going into the driver door panel. Harder materials are going to be on the top part and more or less throughout. But I do like the pattern structure. You got the cloth with the gloss black one touch up and down for the front windows and the storage probably three or four 16.9 ounce water bottles and it goes into the dashboard seamlessly. And it makes a two tier dash in the sense of one for the driver and one for the passenger. And the way the infotainment is actually focused, it's a little bit more driver focused, but that's all right, because they actually cleaned everything up. This is an eight inch touch screen. We don't have navigation. Click into your home button to go into your menus on the lower screen. We have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, slide over so you can see you have your valet mode, Blue Link, this has AM, FM, Sirius XM. The premium package also adds the Bose sound system. Switch it to reverse. You do have a reverse camera with full trajectory and you can click that little car image there and you can see your tow line up so it makes it easy for the reversing. And the way they have everything set up, very easy and seamless. Dual climate control settings because of the convenience package with a power sun roof and that gives us a 10.25 digital instrument cluster which goes through an array of information. And I like how seamless everything is. Nothing in this vehicle stands out except for on the steering wheel. It's a leather wrapped steering wheel on the gloss black. You can see how it protrudes a little bit. It is multi-function. I do like what we're working with and because we have that convenience package that's why it's leather plus the shifter is going to be leather as well. Hyundai Digital Key is also implemented with that so you get a lot of bang for your buck and it's about two grand more to add that feature. Adding the wireless charger Again, part of that convenience package. Two USB ports with a 12 volt storage here. Cup holders, you can easily fit a 16.9 ounce water bottle. I'd say a 32 ounce. And then on here, you have your auto hold and your driver mode, which you can go through your smart, normal, or sport. What I like about that digital cluster is it changes and configures according to your driving. Open up inside here. It's gonna be pretty deep. It's not necessarily so wide. It's a compact SUV. It's pretty soft. It's a little bit more sporty. Same thing for the door panel, but for this price point, you're around thirty-four dollars to $36,000. You're really getting a lot of bang for your buck. Let's see how I look in the back. For the back seats, I'm at 39.5 inches of headroom, 41.3 inches of legroom, which is fine until I start moving my head. Then I actually hit this roof line because of the way it is. Also, when you're sitting here, and you don't have the seats reclined, you can see you're sitting at like a 90 degree angle. You can recline them though to make them more comfortable. Two air vents, two USB ports, and storage behind both of the front seats. So you're taken care of there. Just when you recline the seats, the armrest also does pretty much the same thing. So you're sitting a little bit abnormal. It's more soft here. Cup holders, about a 20 ounce is gonna be max. Door panel, like I was saying from the front, you're gonna get the exit strategy that comes back here with that design, harder materials. You're gonna get the gloss black one touch down. Unfortunately, 
one 16.9 ounce water bottle is all you can fit. I do like that they implement that sporty styling even into the rear though, because it does have a different class when you're comparing it to Toyota, Volkswagen, or Honda. Unfortunately, it's gonna have less storage though in the cup holder side than all of them. Let's see how I look in the center. Sitting it to the center, headroom is gonna be grazing. Leg space, I have plenty. I'm just blocking the air vents, USB port, sharing feet, butt, shoulder space. Fitting three adults, my dimensions can be done. But for a long journey, I would say, you know, maybe recline these back. So that way everybody can enjoy a longer ride. The nice thing about the Tucson is you feel air everywhere. It's almost like a square box inside, yet it feels more oval the way they got the design. So I think they really hit it right on the head when they went for a modern twist with the sports styling. Taking the all new 2022 Hyundai Tucson SEL out for our test run. It's 2.5 liter, four cylinder, you're under 200 horsepower, under 200 pound-feet of torque. You're not really buying this particular car for performance. However, what you're getting with it is still decent because if you need to get up onto the interstate, you can do so. It's not necessarily underpowered. It's not gonna be overpowered. The front windscreen, it's enormous, so you can see everything very well. Because of the ground clearance being nearly seven inches, you also sit up a little bit higher, which is more of a desirable drive because of it being an SUV. As for the turn radius and the braking, we're gonna check that right now. Here's the braking, hard braking and quick turn radius more or less at a stop point you're going to receive about two lanes so it isn't actually that bad engine note it's not necessarily undesirable either 178 horsepower with 187 pound feet of torque i do have it in sport mode so that is one thing to note so it's going to be a little bit more aggressive and you'll see As long as people don't cut in front of you, you'll be able to get your optimal speed. Yes, you're in the eight seconds, zero to 60. It's not necessarily desirable, but nowadays most compact SUVs are getting in these higher numbers and you're not gonna be much faster in the Toyota RAV4 or even the Honda CRV. Oh, it's a red light, red light. Oh yeah, it's a red light, red light, uh-huh. Red light, red light, uh-huh. Give you a little bass from that leather wrap. Here we go. Yes, we can beat an old Toyota Corolla and he had a head start. So you see what I'm saying? It's actually not too bad with that. I do like the feel of the steering wheel. You're gonna have a little bit of artificial, but it does have a little weight to it as well as you get up to a higher speed. Road noise. Even with these upgraded wheels, it's actually not that bad. So I do like that as well. You got the blind spot monitoring, you're taking care of there. You got the rear cross traffic and your frontal pedestrian detection. So taking care of, Hyundai does a great job. I like the turn signal note too, because this is off the Genesis and the Kia, and it actually sounds luxurious. And when you're in a 30 to low $40,000 price point, it's hard to get something that doesn't sound bad. But as for giving her a little go here, I mean, you can see it isn't any issue. Impurities in the road, pretty much glide over it. The strut multi-link setup that you got is a pretty standard setup, but it is well in the sense that you just glide over everything. 26 to 33 mpg is the best in class. Just put it into smart mode to try to get those optimal gas consumption. Otherwise, put it into your normal everyday drive. And I think that's gonna be your perfect blend between the two, unless you need that power. Now there is three things I like and three things that I dislike. Is anything more than that? I'd be buying this vehicle. The three things starting off with is they really did just nail it on this fourth gen. The way they did the refresh from the exterior to the interior, it just has a great design cue. The fact that you could get this in two different tiers as well like a truck or an SUV that is just awesome because if you want to get your feet wet and you don't want to go up to like a Nissan Frontier or a Honda Ridgeline then you get to the Santa, Santa Cruz and when you get that you're gonna have optimal towing you'll have the same ride as this and it's a truck which is very hard to implement in truck world the second thing that I like about it is how open everything is. Because the windows are so enormous on the sides, 
the vehicle actually feels and projects that it's longer than the numbers. So it can be a disadvantage and an advantage at the same time because of safety, but also because people sometimes don't like a longer vehicle. So I guess it's a plus or minus, but I like it because it's easy to see in any direction. The last thing that I like about the vehicle is that you get the attributes from Genesis and Hyundai for a fraction of the price. What other automotive industry does that? Toyota, yeah, they do it with the Lexus. Nissan, they do it with Infiniti, but the price point is a lot more than you would get in the Hyundai. Three things that I dislike about the vehicle has to start off with, we're in the SEL trim, you don't get navigation, you have to pay extra, yet we're paying extra for premium features like the Bose upgraded sound system, your power sunroof, the leather, the ventilated. I get it, the list goes on and on, but add the navigation. The second thing that I dislike has to go with the storage because when you get into the Volkswagen Tiguan, you're gonna have optimal storage even in the center cluster, whereas here they just have a design. The door panels, you're kind of lacking in storage. And even into the rear, you only have one cup holder. This is still going after a family. Families typically have multiple drinks. So you're gonna have a little bit of an issue there, but they do mask it giving you four USB ports. I'm going to put it into smart mode at a red light to see how much it really bogs us down or how heavy the pedal gets. Here we go. Switch it to sport. So I will note that when you go from sport to smart or even normal, obviously it's gonna register the way you drive, but Sport will let you go to a higher RPM where Smart kinda of takes you down. It doesn't weight the pedal, which is a good thing because Nissan does that and it just feels super heavy, making the car feel more heavier than it is. The last thing that I dislike is the towing in this. I mean, when you're comparing it to the Rivals, it is the least in towing and that's kinda of tough because this type of vehicle is an everyday used vehicle and more than likely you will want to tow at least something and it's going to be pretty tough at a thousand to maybe two thousand pounds. But as for the comparison, I do feel that this one is going to be one of the most smooth. It's very close to the Volkswagen Tiguan, the new refresh that they've done with that. And this is a refresh as well. They did an excellent job with the sound deadening and the fact that it's super comfortable. When you get into the Toyota RAV4, you're gonna start feeling a little bit more of the impurities in the road. And when you go to the Honda CRV, they're doing a full refresh for 2023. So looking at the old gen, it's good for what it's worth. But if it's me buying, I'm gonna go for the refresh vehicle with the new technology. The fact that we have the steering assist, we have adaptive cruise control, we have lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring. You have every single thing that you need, plus it's something that you can drive on a distance with the best gas consumption. Because this is a smaller vehicle, you can do these wraparounds. It feels a little peppy, and here we go. And that's the beauty about these sport modes. It actually lets you feel the power to it. Excellent job with the way they did the infotainment and the digital gauge cluster because everything is seamless and I can't stress that enough because when you get into other rivals, you're gonna see harder materials where it just doesn't feel like it fits. Here, everything actually fits seamless. I like to thank Brandon Hyundai for giving us this 2022 Hyundai Tucson SEL for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click the next video, the subscribe button. Check out the details, merchandise, website, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides.